Well, we're doing this session as something very unusual. I have now officially completed all of the Look at the Book sessions on First Peter, and it sometimes is very, very helpful, at least it is for me, to try to gather up everything that is asserted as either having happened or happening in the Christian life or that will happen and put them in the order in which they happen. That is, what what causes things is at the bottom and what results and what is the goal at the top. And I've got 15 summary statements and I've put them in the order that they happen from the most basic and the most eternal into the most the most ultimate and then I'll try to sum up sum up first peter in a single sentence so father as we simply walk through a summary of first peter having looked at dozens and dozens of details grant that we would get a picture of the whole and that it would take root in our lives and that we would actually embody this glorious truth for your great and glorious name. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's, a, here's my overview of the saving purpose of, of God in First Peter. God is a God of great mercy and grace. Second, Christ was foreknown before the foundation of the world. Third, God chose a people for himself, election. Four, Christ was made manifest in the flesh, the incarnation. Fifth, Christ died in our place on the cross. Six, God raised Christ from the dead and gave him glory. Seven, God sent the Holy Spirit from heaven. Eight, the gospel was preached to us. Nine, God caused us to be born again and goes on supplying strength for obedience. Ten, God made promises to his newborn people. And here are the promises. One, that he would keep them, guard them to the end and care for them. Two, that he would bring them to glory. Three, that he would judge their enemies. Eleven, new affections, new passions were brought into being through the new birth and through these promises. And it's amazing how large this, this uh, section is. This is a real dominant reality in First Peter here are the new affections that come into being through the new birth and the promises. Humility or lowliness of mind came into being. Fear of God came into being. Love and reverence for Christ came into being. Faith in God came into being. Hope in God's promised grace came into being. Inexpressible joy came into being. A sense of freedom from shame and human dominion and anxiety arose, came into being. Fearlessness came into being. A disposition of gentleness and tenderness came into being. And brotherly affection for Christians came into being. Twelve, these new affections give rise to a habit of earnest prayer for God's help. Thirteen, these new affections give rise to new conduct and here's the mark of the conduct in First Peter, the proclamation of the excellencies of God, holiness that abstains from worldly practices, enduring unjust suffering, enduring suffering. That's a huge theme in First Peter, enduring unjust suffering with God, with God conscious meekness. Four, continuing with the behaviors that are have growing out of these promises and these new affections honoring of others, blessing our adversaries, blessing them, not cursing them, rather than reviling them, overflowing with proactive good deeds. Good deeds, six times, I think, is in this letter. Over and over again are we told to do good deeds. Fourteen, unbelievers see this new conduct 
And, go, and if God wills, they are silenced, they are shamed, and they are moved to ask about our hope and won over and brought to glorify God. And finally, therefore, by God's design in all things, let us, let us display and praise God's glory and dominion. That's the 15 summary statements of 1 Peter as I see it, and here's my effort to put it into a sentence. In God's omnipotent care for you, as chosen, newborn, forgiven, cherished, spirit-empowered people, people of God, be so fully satisfied in God's promised grace and glory that your lives are marked by blessing your adversaries and by overflowing with good deeds with the aim that unbelievers might be won over and enjoy the glory of God with you forever. So my prayer for us all as we go deep into this letter, and I'm sure I've only scratched the surface of what God has for us in this letter, is that this sentence would become the description of our lives and that this would happen. More and more people would be brought into an enjoyment of the glory of God with us forever.